finding a good heating and air tech is getting harder than ever. I want to do this video because I was talking to a friend of mine the other day and we were just talking about the labor market and finding good people, but ultimately how it's getting harder and harder for homeowners, especially when I help folks with our new HVAC guide, I'll talk to them about finding a good heating and air tech. It's just getting so tough now. And I think there's a couple of reasons for that. I think we are seeing the uh, baby boomer generation who for the longest time took care of a lot of these things, the services in people's homes and things like that. But when you have such a large generation of people that population wise that filled so many positions and now they've just all retired and they're was no one there to fill the vacuum. Old timers that knew how to fix everything, they didn't have any apprentices that wanted to learn from them there to learn the trade. Now, I can't say there haven't been any, obviously there's been some, but few and far between in comparison, right? And you have just all these folks retiring and just no one replacing them. I think another thing that is changing, but for the longest time, blue collar work was just something that some folks just either didn't wanna do or they felt like they were above it, whatever the case was. But for the longest time, I remember when I was a kid, folks would say, you get good grades, go to college, and then you should be good. You'll get in with a company and then work 40 years of your life and retire and get a pension and all these things, right? And so I think those days are over. And a lot of folks recognize that. I heard that this past year was the first year that college attendance has been down in comparison to years in the past. And I think that that may change a little bit, but ultimately blue collar work, got to get your hands dirty. A lot of folks just, they don't want to do it. But even the folks that do want to do it, one thing that I've realized as I've hired folks for Griffin Air is just the lack of education. I hired a guy, he had been in trade school for a year and going to school to be a heating and air tech. And there were just simple things that they were just not teaching them at the school. It's nothing personal, but I think a lot a lot of trade schools and just schools in general reminds me of a lot of colleges. They're there to take your money and not really teach you anything of any real value. He had some skills, he had some knowledge, but none of them really applied to what we really needed him to do. It was basically like hiring somebody that had no experience at all. Kind of felt bad for the guy. He had spent all this money to go to school, but couldn't even wire a thermostat. To me, that should have been, honestly, when I hire someone new at Griffin Air, that's the first thing I teach them. The very first thing I teach them is how to wire a thermostat, what each one of the wires do, and then gives them a base knowledge that I can now take and say, okay, now that you know what that wire does, let me show you how the system works. And you can see that it closes this relay and it does this. And I don't know if that's gonna change, but that's definitely there. And I think it's being amplified even more with these newer technologies that are coming out. You've got the guys that are new and learning the trade, but you also have guys that have been doing this for a long time. They knew what they were doing. And now they've almost kind of got to relearn things. They've got to add to their knowledge base. And when they kind of had it all figured out anyway, right? They were masters of the trade. And now it's like they're having to relearn a whole bunch of new stuff. So, you know, the newer technologies have definitely amplified that. I think that if you are a homeowner that you're looking for a good heating and air technician, whether they work for themselves or they work for a company, ultimately finding kind of that sweet spot, somebody that's been doing it a while, but maybe they're still hungry and learning the trade, learning these new technologies. I can tell you as an employer of other people, that has been tough. I have some really good guys that work at Griffin Air. They're amazing folks, but we've had a lot of folks come and go that for whatever reason, either didn't want to get with it. Maybe it's just not what they want to do. And then finally, to kind of wrap all this up, I'll say that one of the complaints that I've heard on the guide, I've heard it from you guys, I've heard it in comments on my YouTube videos, and that is a lot of heating and air techs want to be paid paid top dollar. If you find somebody that even if they are good, you feel like you're almost being taken advantage of a lot of cases because the good ones, they want to be paid for being good, right? Kind of get what you pay for. And if you go with the cheap guy, sometimes you get what you pay for. When you find a good one, sometimes it just kind of feels like they're a little overpriced, right? Honestly, I think that's going to get worse. I think as time goes on, finding these good heating and air technicians, more and more of them, they're going to be wanting top dollar. A couple weeks ago, I was reading a social media post where a guy was saying, hey, in my state, I'm looking for a union to join because my last job, I was in a union and I was making $42 an hour and three weeks vacation and blah, 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 all these benefits and things. And the point is, I mean, does he deserve all that? I guess, but that's not the point. The point is you, the homeowner has to pay for that. If you want somebody that's really good, that is making that kind of money, a lot of times folks just don't realize that it's the homeowner in the end that gets to pay for that. And so when you get homeowners like you watching this, that maybe your income didn't go up. So your income has not been keeping up with all this 
inflation and the changing times and all the higher prices and now you've got all these heating and air techs that they're top dollar and they want to be paid as such and so that just kind of makes it worse and worse so i think as time goes on you're going to see more folks being self-employed you're going to see the really good technicians out there they're going to start their own businesses they're not going to want to work for companies that set their pay for them. They're not gonna wanna have homeowners that are not necessarily being so nice to them all the time and they have to kind of put up with it because they work for a company and they don't wanna lose their job. So I think you're gonna see the really good ones. They're gonna start their own businesses. So in towns where you might've seen two or three big companies, now you're gonna maybe see 10 or 15 small companies, right? And those same guys that are really good and they're gonna get paid top dollar and they're gonna be self-employed, they are not gonna to wanna to put up with the crappy employees that don't wanna show up or don't wanna learn the trade. And so they're gonna stay small on purpose. They're gonna intentionally not grow because their profit margins are gonna be really good regardless. Also on top of that, you're gonna see more and more products, more and more manufacturers, more and more things that are geared towards the homeowner, the DIY, the do-it-yourselfers. And so you're gonna see more and more homeowners kind of doing that sort of thing because they can't find anybody good that, that they feel comfortable with giving their money to because I heard a guy make the argument the other day that when it comes to DIY stuff for homeowners, yeah, they might be inadequately educated to do some of the things they're doing, but so are the guys they're calling. So are the heating and air technicians that they have coming to their home, they're inadequate too. So what's the difference? Save the money and do crap work yourself, right? So I shouldn't say crap work, but I see the argument there where a homeowner's saying, well, I'll, I'll just save the money and try to figure this out myself. I think you're gonna see more of that. You're seeing companies that were DIY coming out with more products, and then you're seeing more companies get into that game where they're coming out with do it yourself type stuff. So I think the conundrum becomes if you are a homeowner and you install something and then there's something wrong with it, finding someone that can and will repair that after that. So if you've now tried to do it yourself and there's something wrong, whether it's right away or even two, three years down the road, finding a good heating and air technician that will now repair that system that you put in. But finally, let me just wrap up and say, what do you do if you find a good one? If you find a good heating and air tech that you really like, what should you do? I would say hold on to them that for starters, definitely take care of them. Make sure that you as their customer aren't shortchanging them or whatever, or leaving them bad reviews. I would say sort of like if you stay at a three-star hotel and maybe you didn't get five-star service, but you did get three-star, you stayed there, you paid for three-star and everything was good nonetheless, maybe you shouldn't leave them a bad review. Maybe that guy might have more of a reason to walk away if they have a customer that isn't treating them the way they want to be treated. I think you're going to see a lot of that. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing guys on social media groups say, had a customer do this or that, treat me this way or that way. And I'm busy enough without them. So I told them to go call someone else. And I think you're going to see more of that as well, that the good ones, the really good heating and air technicians and companies, they're just going to be so busy if someone's not treating them well, or if they don't want to pay the rates that they're charging that you're going to see more of that as well. I'll probably get some uh, argument on that. If you want to comment down below, I'd love to hear it. I know whenever I do videos like this, people seem to take exception to some of this stuff. I'm just throwing this out there because that's what I'm seeing. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it definitely comment down below. I think that a lot of these things are going to get worse as time goes on. So it'll be interesting to watch that. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.